This clip will introduce you to Jupyter Notebooks, the main vehicle we're going to use in this course to communicate content and materials, but also for you to create your own materials and your own documents, and eventually also to create your assignments and submit them. Jupyter Notebooks is a technology that is based on the idea of a single file that contains everything that you need in a data workflow. So that means that you can write code on that file, you can execute that code, and then you can also uh, save the results of that code. At the same time, you can mix up code and code outputs with your own narrative. So it includes a, a way for you to weave comments and text that is rendered nicely, almost as you would on a, on a Word file, on a, on a Word processor. So without further ado, let's jump on Jupyter Lab and I'll show you a little bit more about what Jupyter Notebooks are and how you can use them, interact with them, save them, etc. Let's go. Okay, so if you don't have any ex pre-existing notebook, the main, the easiest way to create a notebook is by uh, clicking on this button here on the main panel that will create automatically a new notebook and name it untitled.ipymb. So a couple of things to note here. One, by default, is, is, is named untitled, but also you can rename it by right-clicking and then click on rename. So we're going to call this my first notebook, rename it. The second thing I want you to pay attention to is that the file extension is ipynb. This is the file extension for notebooks, and it's the same as you would have, for example, uh, with a Word document where it would be docx. Every time you see ipynb as the file extension, this is a, a notebook. And the third thing I want you to pay uh, attention to is that when we created this notebook automatically, the file showed up on the file browser. So wherever you have been launching Jupyter Lab from, when you create a new notebook, the file will be uh, set up. So in my case, this, this is pointing to the desktop of my computer. So if I went to the desktop, there would be a file there with the name My First Notebook and the extension ipynb. This is useful because when you create your own notebooks, it's good to know where they are safe so you can go and copy them or move them around on different files or send them to a colleague, um, etc. At the end of the day, they are a single file that once you work on them and, and you save your work on them, you can distribute, share, um, etc. as you would with any other file. Note that I created, I renamed the file and then this uh, red, uh, sorry, dark, gray dot uh, popped up. This means that the file has unsaved content. So if we want to save the latest changes, we can come here and click on save and everything that we had on the notebook will be saved to the file here on the file browser. Okay, so what are I, I, we were saying that notebooks are a single file that is able to mix and collate code, the output that that code when you run it produces and then also intermixing uh, narrative and, and text. The way, the, the way notebooks pull this trick off is through this idea of a cell. So you can think of a notebook as a collection of cells, of independent cells, and cells can be highlighted uh, by yourself with the, with the mouse. In this case, we only have one cell, and because that's the one we have selected, it's highlighted with this blue line here. Okay, so cells can be of two types of code or I'm going to create another cell and I'm going to change it to something called Markdown. So here we have the two main types of cells that notebooks can contain and that we will be using for this course. So code cells, which is this one, you can recognize them because A on the top uh, menu of the notebook, which is different from the top menu of Jupyter Lab, we will see here the word code indicating that the selected cell uh, will contain code that can be run and executed. 
At the same time, the code, ce code cells will also have these uh, square brackets here, which allow us to, when we run it, for example, two plus two, and then I'm going to run it by pressing play. When we run it, the cell, when we press play, the cell is run, the code in the cell is run, and it's evaluated, which means that Jupyter Lab is taking the code inside the cell, in this case, the two plus two, it's sending it to something called the Python interpreter. And the Python interpreter is parsing that code, realizing that in this case is an addition and sending back the result. And the result is printed below the cell. Okay. So every time we run a cell, the square brackets uh, counter goes up by one. So we could run it again and then we'll see how this is a uh, uh, this goes goes up by one. These are code cells. We could change them with Markdown. I'm not going to do it on this one, but that's how you could change it. And if you want to run it, you can press play, or you can press Shift Enter on the keyboard, and that is Shift plus Enter, and that will run the the cell. The other types of cell that we have is markdown cells, or we can call them text cells, or, um, which in this case, in this context, is going to see the, to be the same. We can see that a cell is uh, designed or is built to to contain text because on the top of the notebook menu we'll see markdown, and also because we won't see any counter here. Okay. So there's no square brackets and there won't be any counter. Here we can text, uh, we can type text. For example, this is a text snippet. If we press play here, there's no code to be evaluated. What it's going to do instead is rendering the text. Okay, and here is where the uh, magic of text cells comes in. Cells with text can have plain text, but they can also have something called markdown, which is a, what is called a markup language, which is a set of rules that we can use to render different parts of text in different ways. So for example, if I want to get uh, a title, I can do one hashtag and the name of the title. And then when I render these, by pressing play, the bit that was on the hashtag gets rendered as the main title. There's a lot of rules, and there's uh, further materials in these uh, in this in the course website for you to follow up and learn more about how you can create a very fancy documents using Markdown. But other than that, these are the main two cells that um, that you can create within a notebook. Now, once we have worked on our notebook and everything is ready, we can save it. And then all of our changes get back into the file. And if we want, we can close. If we want, we can also shut down the kernel, although this is not always necessary. Now, if we come later on, and we want to work a bit more on, on our notebook, we double click on the file and this launches our notebook. An interesting thing to remember of notebooks is that it saves the code, it saves the output that you've created, and it saves the text, but it does not save things you create on the fly. So for example, we're going to create a variable here called hello which means that I can now print X and it'll print not X, but the value of X. If I save this to my notebook and then I stop the kernel and completely restart, and then I come here again, it saved all of my code. But if I try to run the print X, it's going to create an error. And the error says the name X is not defined. 
because even though it's defined here, this cell has not been run on the new session. This is important to remember. So now if we run this and then we run the second one, then this is going to work again. Okay. Final trick with notebooks, you can convert them to other files. So if you come to file on the JupyterLab menu, and then all the way down to export notebook as, there's a few file formats that you can create. Depending on where you're running this notebook, you may not be able to create all of them. So for example, some of you may not be able to create a PDF right away. But what everyone can do is create an HTML. So if you want to export the notebook as an HTML, this is going to automatically, in a different page maybe, download on your computer an HTML file that will render everything that you have on your notebook. 